All right, let's get started. About three minutes into the intro. Let's uh, let's get going. We're good. Let, let's let's do some malware. Let's see. Okay, Mike's going. One of my biggest fears is one of these days I'm going to get like two hours into a stream, and my mic is going to be off. I'm going to be just devastated. Today, we're working on C2 stuff. But before we do that, let me thank Anomalous for following on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Valhalla underscore dev. Thank you, Anomalous. No perspective for subscribing on YouTube, twitch.tv slash at Valhalla dev. I think that's how they do it. Um, GG Reversing for following on Twitch, Cold Rivers for following on Twitch, and Swesty for following on Twitch. Thank y'all, hello the bomb. So, today we're gonna be doing some C2 stuff. Which means I need to boot up a VM, which means something could very well go wrong again with my VMs because it seems like just about every stream something does. Um, so, let me get rid of the useless screens. Screen, and let's pull up code. Let's hope it doesn't pop up anything that it shouldn't. That's my AOC stuff. Let's pop open documents, RE stuff somewhere, RE stuff, Rusty Wolf. Um, is that not in? I guess it's not in my C2 folder, is it? Let's see. Maybe it's in Wolf. Yeah, it's in Wolf. So let's open that up and we're gonna open up the Rusty Wolf folder in another window. Let's see, new window. Not gonna mess around with Vim right now because I um, screwed up my Vim RC file just badly. So I need to fix that at some point and that does not make for a good stream whatsoever. Um, okay, so that's a rusty wolf. Let's open up our VM. How's everybody doing? It's been a bit. I took off all week last week, um, which was good. I enjoyed the time off, got to spend time with family. It's always fun. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. That's interesting. Am I getting am I getting some lag? Is that what is that what is happening? How does it look to everybody else? Not entirely sure why anything would be going wrong with OBS, but I wouldn't at all be surprised. All right. Pop open our VM here. Let's make sure that we've got what in the world? Oh, is our VM going to be annoying exactly like I said? Y'all remember? Who remembers? Sometimes it's full screen mode that jacks things up. It looks like that's what is going on here. View. Scaled? Nope. Oh. There we go. All right, so yeah, this is the right one. Um, ask me later. I do need to upgrade this VM for sure. All right, so we've got our backend C2 part open. Um, let's make sure that this is the right, it's actually mounted correctly. Test.text. And if we pop over, okay, so we've got code open there. But we're gonna use code on here. Let's see if we can see test.txt in our C2 file. Uh-oh. Then C2 slash backend. Let's close it here so we don't get confused. Yeah, it's looking like we may have something wrong here. Let's 
sys slash embed c2 huh so I have no idea what this um, c2 thing is oh my gosh fat fingers Helm local devlog c2 backend so that theoretically should be the exact same folder on my host already dealing with stupid issues here test.txt is there api.py is there so it looks like i may have so that's init.py see if it's in a different folder that i'm not aware of oh i bet it's here should see app.py data no nope, that's not it either I guess I could just look in here, settings. Let's see. Shared folders. We have no share shared folders. So this is a completely separate folder. Cool. That's not gonna cause any issues down the line at all. Totally did that on purpose. All right, so we've got a couple of choices here. I can wrangle with, why am I having streaming issues on YouTube now? Restream is having problems. Apparently Restream is just not sending it back to YouTube well, is what I'm seeing right now. Nothing I can do. Um, how does it look to everybody else? I, I, again, I, I can't really tell how the stream actually looks. YouTube is telling me it doesn't look good though. Hopefully it looks alright. Not too much I can do here. What up, Bibinho? 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 Something like that on YouTube. How's it going? All right, we're just going to use the one that's already on the VM, and I'll have to sync the files off stream because I just don't feel like dealing with that right now. All right, so we've got api.py. Um, we've got gitvec, gitvex, ping. All of that should work fine. What we are going to do is an add vec. So what we want to do is add to this um, dictionary right here. Um, so are we pulling in that dictionary yet? We've got our data deer. No, we are not. So this right here is not what we want to do. We don't want to just have a straight up post um, file that's just a little hacky you can do better than that all right I have a vague feeling that the YouTube stream does not look good um, people are bouncing off like crazy right now so I don't really know what to do about that add a new victim at app.post keep up dude what's up OX on YouTube how's it going Add Vic, def add Vic. I already have an add Vic function. Yep, I sure do. So that's not a terrible iteration of it, but we're gonna do better. All right, so it's going to take in, let's actually see how I was doing that, a Vic. victim so cool thing about um, fast API which is what I'm using for our c2 backend is that it allows for typing um, basically similar to TypeScript 
which is just uber useful um, for all kinds of different applications, but especially when you're dealing with um, kind of structured data like we will be. Um, so it's going to basically enforce this being the correct um, data model. So if we look up here, we actually create the class up here. Let's see, right here. So we're creating the class here. Um, and we're actually able to obviously add um, different functions on that. So this to dict is just basically converting the victim um, class to a normal dictionary, like a normal py Python dictionary. Um, super useful, obviously. And what this will do is when I make a post request to the advic um, endpoint, then it's going to enforce the data model. Basically, if something is sent that does not like match this data model, um, then it's going to throw an error. And that's super useful because basically, if you don't have this kind of data model enforcement, then you could be sending data that's just not formatted correctly. Either a field is wrong or something like that is wrong um, and you won't know how to fix it because it won't return any kind of useful errors. Um, so this will enforce that data model um, to make sure that when we send victims to the endpoint, it is sending them usefully. So um, let's do curvix is equal to get vix. So that's going to fetch the current victims. Just going to read the whole blob. So it's basically going to read this whole blob in right here. We are interested in the victims key. Um, and what we want to do is we want to create um, a victim object that is going to hold all of the useful information in it. Um, so like I said, this right here is the data model that we've got thus far. We've got an IP address that's fairly easy to pull off, a last ping, which is pretty easy to pull off, a first ping, which is very easy to pull off, an ID. Um, we're going to have to decide how to do that, and we can add things to this data model at will. So if I decide to add a username, or if I decide to add like OS information, then it's very, very simple, um, very easy to do that. So let's go in here, and we're going to add a victim. So. Let's do vic dot two underscore dict. Um, and we're going to hold that in vic dict, which is just a hysterical name, dict equals vic dot two dict. And we're going to do curvix dot add. Um, curvix dot, uh, no, it's not add dot, oh man, dot push, right? push vic dict. And then we are going to do, should be, we should have a write dix or write vix. We don't. I think I may have gotten rid of it on accident. So def post fix. Do I already have that? Probably do. Um, let's just do def um, write vix. And we'll have a, uh, let's see. OBJ, which is going to be an object with a VIX dictionary in it, but we don't want to, let's not bother with the um, data type there. And we're going to do with open data dear plus victims.json. We want to write to it as F. We are going to do F dot write OBJ. Um, and then it will close automatically. So all that's going to do is actually write our object out to file. Nothing complex there, nothing super cool there, just that's about it. So technically this should work if our malware is actually sending in the correct format. Um, that's going to be the part that we also have to work on on this side. Um, we're working on the C2, but in order to get the C2 to work, we have to get the um, actual malware itself to send everything in the right format. So you can't just work on the C2 in that sense. Um, so we're just going to skip down here and return. Oh, we also have to do um, right vix. We're going to make an object with 
Uh, no, we're not going to do it this way. Let's make it a little bit cleaner. JS is equal to this. Victims. Uh, curve X. And then we are going to... Let's see. Let's do the JSON dot... Dot... Um, loads, I think. I'm a little scrambled right now. Um, but I think it's loads that we want. And we are going to do right vix JS. Oh man, I've got, I'm over here pressing like escape like I'm using NeoVim because that's just who I am as a person now. What's up, Twitch? How's everybody doing? Is the music too loud? Shouldn't be. I've got it turned down like lower than I normally have it. Okay. So we're writing everything out. Let's return a status success. And let's just return back the victim object message victim obj vic. All right. So what this is going to do is upon initially connecting to our C2. Let's just pretend like this malware is just now, um, you know, infecting a system. It is going to hit the add underscore Vic endpoint with this post that has a certain amount of information. So obviously it's got to gather that information first. Um, we could go ahead and write a ping, honestly, um, or we could go ahead and run a ping first instead of running the add Vic endpoint but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna run the advic endpoint and that's just going to throw all of our information into our database, which is just a JSON file. Um, so we have to make sure that the uh, malware itself actually works with that, like in that regard. Um, so kind of off topic, but did you get OSCP? LOL, no. <laughs> um, so OSCP, uh, for those of you who have not been following the channel too long, um, obviously Bill Bino has been following it for a while because I haven't done anything OSCP related in a bit. Um, I attempted the OSCP twice now. Um, any anti-analysis techniques? Uh, save that question for a sec. I'm going to hit that question after I answer the OSCP question. Um, I tried the OSCP I want to say twice, it may have been three times, um, failed it at least twice. Um, the first time I failed the exam, the second time I didn't even attempt it because basically I didn't like, I didn't commit enough time to it. I just like on a whim decided to do it again, dropped too much money and failed it again. Um, am I going to do it again later? Maybe. Um, so there's a weird part of this, honestly, and this is me being very honest as a hashtag content creator. Um, the OSCP was incredible for my channel. Like anything that had OSCP in the title was just a banger. Like everybody watched it. Um, so part of me is like tempted to like retake the OSCP for the like content, which is the stupidest possible thing. Um, the other part of it is I'm a software developer now. So the OSCP isn't super useful for me. Um, you know, I don't necessarily need it for my job, so I can't get my job to pay for it. So I'd be paying for it out of pocket again. And I've now done that twice. And it's, it, I think it's actually gotten more expensive, hasn't it? Let's see. Let's pull up the OSCP pricing. Product pricing. Oh, they've got, yeah, I forgot they're doing the SAS shit with the OSCP now. Um, so the course insert bundles starting at $1,500. So that's probably going to be like the minimal amount of, um, the minimal amount of lab time, which hint, hint, you don't want to do at all. Um, and that's starting at $1,500. Now, since they're doing this SAS shit, fundamental 100 level course to get prepared for our advanced courses, learn one, one year of lab access plus two exam attempts for one selected course. That's not bad at all. So you get, this is not going to turn into an OSCP ad because I've got issues with it. Um, but you pay $2,000 for an entire year of lab access, two exam attempts for one course. So you're paying $500 extra dollars to get lab access 
for an entire year, which is a long ass time. Oh, but that's that's a New Year's sale. Okay, so it's normally a lot more. Now this, this is for the homies who are super dedicated and want to just drop $5,500 for an entire year of, I guess, unlimited exam attempts for one year for your employee. Oh, so that's, that's probably enterprise level stuff. Um, so to answer your question, I did not get the OSCP. I might redo it again. Probably not, but I might. Um, Anti-analysis techniques, we're gonna get there. Um, we're not there yet, but we're gonna. That's a promise that I shouldn't have made. But we're definitely going to try to get there at least. Um, I think it's on the roadmap that I wrote out in an earlier video. Okay, so theoretically, we've got everything in place here. We've got our advic endpoint um, that takes in a certain data model and it will write it out to our victim.json. Um, so now we have to return to our malware and make sure that this is implemented. Um, so we've got our registry ops, don't need to worry about that, main.rs. Okay, so let's go to our netlib code. That's what we really want. Okay, so let me get kind of acclimated to the code again. Um, one of the things that I really want to work on, honestly, is working on Rusty Wolf um, outside of streaming a little bit more often because I keep having to come back to the code um, and kind of like reacclimate myself to it, which isn't great. Um, kind of takes a little time, lots of context switching there. Um, okay, so. If we go to our main.rs file, let's shrink this down a bit. Let's, ooh, that's not what I wanted. Let's see, preferences, settings. Let's make the text a little bit larger. Let's do 18. Is there a save button somewhere on here? Good God. Did that do it? Yeah, that did it, okay. Text should be a little bit larger. Hopefully y'all can see that a little better. So then our main right now, we don't need that. Um, what is this? So that's all of our message box A stuff. Don't necessarily need that. RT.block on netlib send username. Okay, so right now we're just sending the username. So if we go over to our netlib, which is here, don't need to worry about our reg ops right now. If we go over to our netlib, we've got a send username. Send username is sending it to the slash username um, endpoints. And we are returning the string returnable, which is the result. Okay. So what we wanna do now is make another function. Don't need to worry about this. Uh, our send ping we don't necessarily need. Might be able to get rid of this, I think. Let's see. Cargo run. See if, it, if there's a fit about that. Right, got our hello world. We've got our bug that we're gonna fix on Wednesday. Let's see if it hits. Yep, it hit. Um, that currently doesn't do anything with our username, I think. Slash username. Received username, yeah, it doesn't do anything, which is fine. Um, this one is going to do something with it. So we are going to get rid of this, and we are going to do a pub async function fn think I got the yeah and we're going to do um, init commit we're going to return a string and let's just do um, let mute um, ret equal to string new still pressing escape to Why is it having an issue there? I haven't written Rust in like a day. Considering, consider returning the, oh, I am. Right. 
Okay, so that's not throwing any more fits. Should be good on that end. So let's comment out what we want to do. First, we want to get the username. We're probably going to pass that in from main. So let's do, let's see what our regops is returning. Grab username is returning a result string. Okay. So here we're just going to take a username of type string. And so we've got the username, that's fine. Um, we wanna create the object. So that's just going to be a hash map. So we're going to need a hash map. Um, how am I sending that up here? Plus URI, JSON, and map. Okay, so this is how we're doing it here. I believe it's, yeah, it's with the hash map. Um, Map.insert message message. Okay, so this is super easy. So let JS, which is of type hash map, and it's a hash map of strings, equal to hash map new. All right, so let's copy over our data model. Let's see if I've got a copy between VMs. Copy over a data model. Probably don't have copy turned on. Oh, sure don't. Okay, so we've got a IP, last ping, first ping, ID. So IP, last ping, first ping, ID. Okay, why don't you change to C sharp? It would be interesting to see. Um, I hate C sharp, it's too much like Java. <laughs> if you want an honest answer. Um, I worked a little bit with C sharp when I was doing Ud uh, Unity. Unity, not Udemy, but Unity stuff. Um, didn't like it, reminded me way too much of my Java days. Um, and frankly, it seems like most malware right now is being written in C, C++, Rust, Go. I think there's C-sharp malware out there. I'm not like, I guess, familiar enough with all of the malware to know. Um, but I think sticking with like the major languages, honestly, is more interesting and more useful. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the reason why I'm doing that. Um, what problem is it having here? Come on, dude. Let's go up here. Okay, I guess we can just leave out the type and let it get it implicitly. Yep. Uh, we can make this mute. Still has a problem with that. But mute map had no problem up here. <laughs> but now it's got a problem with it. Why does it have a problem with it? Considering giving JS an explicit type, the type for parameter K is specified. Why would I do that? I've coded malware encryptors in C sharp and still useful, but you can't interact with most of the low level stuff. So it's very limited in that way, but you can still bypass AV EDR. Yeah, um, so I know cryptors, you're, you're entirely right. There are cryptors that are absolutely written um, in C sharp. That I do know. Um, I'm not familiar enough with C sharp and like to, I'm not familiar enough with C sharp to know why a lot of cryptors are written in C sharp. I imagine it's honestly because it's a lot like, um, Java and people know how to kind of manipulate data in Java. Um, some, so I've got this kind of weird dream in my head and this is going to sound super stupid. Um, but I've got this weird dream in my head where I work on a project and try to implement as many programming languages as humanly possible within that project. Um, I'm thinking about making this that project. I might not end up doing that, but I I'm thinking about it. Um, just kind of for the meme and to show that you can include like tons of different languages within a, a given project. Like right now for work, I'm, I'm working on a project that it's Rust, 
React.js, um, obviously HTML and CSS within React.js. Um, it's got Python in it. The back end, I believe, is in Python. And I think there's something else. I can't remember what it is. There, there's, there's another language in there somewhere. There's like four or five different languages in the one project. Um, it's ending up being a, an absolute just beast of a project, but um, you know, it's as, it's a simply it's essentially following that like you know let's include as many languages as possible for the meme. Um, okay, so we don't yet have the IP, um, which might be a fun little side project. I didn't realize that I didn't have that yet. Um, the last ping and first ping will be easy. The ID will probably just use the username. Um, okay, so Nicholas, straight up, you don't necessarily need to use that many programming languages. Um, I think it probably would be better if I didn't, honestly. But, you know, it's kind of a learning experience and it is working fairly efficiently. But, you know, that's beside the point. Um, anyways, appreciate it. Um, Okay, so we need to grab the IP. Um, let's figure out a way to do that within the Windows API. I did not expect this little side project to pop up, but it makes sense that it did. All right, there's my metrics for my blog. I'm sure y'all are interested in that. Um, Windows API IP address. How to get the local IP address for Windows system. We don't want the local, we want the public. We could technically, so if we pop over to the data model, right now the data model is expecting the IP to be in here. It would actually be a lot easier to grab the IP on the back end. So let's go ahead and do it that way. So instead, we're gonna grab the IP on the back end and write it out. Um, so let's not worry about the IP here. This is our data model. So we just need the last ping, first ping, and ID. Frankly, we don't need the last ping either because if we're initially adding the victim here, the last ping and the first ping are gonna be the exact same. Um, so we really just need first ping and ID. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do time and ID. So let's go back. This isn't what I wanted. We actually can close that out. And let's pop over here. Um, let's just do time, which is going to be a string and the ID. And we're going to take this stuff out. ID and time. Oh, I missed them. I know I can use the key binds and code, but I, I haven't done that yet. Time, time. All right. It's your choice, mate. Do you think Rust is more safe for coding than C, C++? I've never done coding in Rust, so I don't know that much. Um, straight up, yes. Uh, the Memory safety issue within Rust is like amazing. Um, basically Rust, the Rust scopes and lifetimes, they don't eliminate like memory access bugs in their entirety, but they massively reduce them and they make it, basically they make it difficult for you to write unsafe code. You can still do it, but it makes it more difficult. And that's why I think Rust is going to be used more often in system programming in the future because Basically, it, it it takes the stupidity a little bit more out of the developer's hands. But Go does garbage collection too. So let me find my video on this because I have one. Um, Studio.youtube.com. Let me find my video on Rust lifetimes. Um, it's not just the most amazing video I've ever made, but it's I. Right. Um, so here's the video. I'll post it here and I'll post it in Twitch chat for all two of you watching on Twitch. Um, so basically garbage collection adds a certain level of inefficiency. Um, 
so there's like an overhead involved with garbage collection that slows your program down and garbage collection is also imperfect and therefore has bugs um so you're gonna run into like issues there um rust is also good for polymetacode yep that's 100 percent true i have not gotten good enough with rust to do that but it is good um, but basically the way Rust handles it is a lot faster and basically you don't need garbage collection because of the way Rust does scoping and, you know, memory safety. Um, so that's, that's kind of the difference between that and garbage collection. It seems hard to learn. Yes. Um, less hard to learn than, um, C, C++, 110% period. Like there's the, I won't say there's no comparison because they both are difficult, but there's close to no comparison. I mean, it, they're, they're just fantastic languages or, or Rust is a fantastic language. Just C, C++ is a fucking disaster. Um, okay. I think we fixed that up. Um, we did not reboot our C2, so I'm gonna have to remember to do that. Um, so all we're worried about is the time and the ID. So Rust time, I need to figure that out. Rust timestamp string. Converting Unix timestamp to readable time string. There we go. From, oh, it's literally date time. Nice. Oh, that looks like a mess. Uh, let's not worry about that. Date time and chrono. That looks like what we want. I just want the current date, y'all. Like, why is this not the first thing on here? Rust current time stamp to string. Get the current time stamp in milliseconds. Exactly what we need. We want the most recent version. Since the epoch. There we go. We can use system time and Unix epoch. All right, let's just hippity hoppity, your code is my property. Actually, we're gonna throw this into a helper function. Function get time. This is going to return, hopefully, a string. Let's start equals system time now. Let's since the epoch equals start. Quick fix. There we go. Don't need that. That should never happen. Well, I guess it might happen someday. Shouldn't ever happen, but whatever. Um, so since the epoch equals start dot duration since the Unix epoch dot expect that, and we are going to return since the epoch. What type is that? Expected string found struct duration. Convert the duration dot as sex. Oh, that is messy looking code. Okay. That should be returning what we're looking for. Come on, dude. VS code is the best worst IDE ever. These hint pop-ups are a disaster. Okay. Let rat equal to that. And we are going to return rat. Let's see what rat's type is. Expected string, found u64. So we are going to do Rat parse 
u64. No, that's not what we're looking for. String parse. No. Um, is it just rat dot to string? <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> it's always that simple. When in doubt, to string it out, y'all. So that will get us our time. So js.insert time. Now we want double quotes time. Get time. Didn't like that, apparently. Uh, dot unwrap. Oh, should be unwrapped. Mismatch type, expected unit type, that found enum option string. What? Oh, I just didn't have a semicolon, so it thought that I was trying to return that. Duh. All right, so we've got our time in, now we just need our ID. So we're gonna make the ID, we're going to do um, let ID is equal to string from, let's see, let's store time. Do let time equal that. We're going to do our username. Why is all of this in the wrong function? <laughs> what the hell? Okay, now we're gonna have to yank all that out. What happened? I just completely destroyed this. So let's grab all of this now. Oh, that's super annoying. So now we've gotta undo until this, oh, that makes me, that makes me angry. So let's grab, <laughs> I just threw all of this in the wrong function and now I've got to figure out what was in that function. I think it's ret is equal to that. Oh, this is super annoying. Why did I do that? This is all supposed to be here. Hashmap.new, js.insert. Um, okay, I'm gonna try this. Pavel? Yeah, I know a little bit of Cyrillic. Cyrillic. Work, virus. What's going on, man? js.insert. So let's do time up here. Let time is equal to get time. Going to insert time and time. Then we're going to do let ID is equal to string from, and we're going to do time plus username. Let's see if we can concatenate those two that easily. I tend to doubt it. So let's do dot two string. I think it's to dot str. Dot, maybe it's as underscore string. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. And time also dot as str. It does annoy me that it's dot two underscore string and dot as underscore str. Like why? that just doesn't need to be that way. I guess I got a dot two underscore owned. It's moved at 73. Oh. Okay, so now we're dealing with borrow checker shit. So 
this does need to be dot as underscore str. Here, let's just yoink all of this out. Oh, we can't. <laughs> okay. So I was thinking let's yoink all of that out and throw it into a variable, but that's literally what I'm trying to do right here. Twitch chat is dead tonight. People don't like watching malware development on Twitch. They like it on YouTube, but not on Twitch. My main audience is on YouTube anyways, so that that doesn't help Twitch, but I've got a grand total of 431 folks following me over on Twitch, which I was almost proud about. All right, so let's wrestle with the um, borrow checker here. String concatenation requires an own string on the left. Time dot to underscore own. And then it's gonna have issues because it was moved up here. Be right back, I think my daughter just woke up. Okay, now we're back. Appreciate it, Darko. We're gonna be doing a couple of streams this week. Three, so Wednesday we're gonna be doing some more malware dev. Friday, we're gonna do some fun shit. We're gonna do, um, instead of malware dev, we're gonna do some bug bounty stuff. Because my New Year's resolution, one of my many New Year's resolutions um, for the next year is to um, make like a dollar, a singular dollar from bug bounty because that's been on my list for a long time. Okay, so this isn't complaining anymore. So that's good. JS.insert. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of bug bounty stuff. ID and ID. My cat has climbed on top of my ser server rag. All right, so now we've got our hash map built out as much as we need it to. Let's go up here and yoink this. and throw it here. Do you be doing in any other language? I'm still very new to Rust. I'm learning C2 dev using C Sharp. Um, so my C2 is actually in Python. Um, so you are now the second person tonight to ask about C Sharp. And I'll explain it the same way that I explained it last time. I don't do C Sharp because it reminds me too much of Java. Um, that is one of the languages why I, one of the reasons why I will never go back to game development in Unity. <laughs> I just, I can't stand C Sharp. It just makes me angry. Um, so I am thinking about, and since there's a grand total of five people watching the stream right now, I'll bounce some ideas off of y'all. I am thinking about occasionally doing some like graphics programming using Rust. Um, like not necessarily game programming though it might turn into game programming but like graphics programming using rust because i think i think it would be fun i'm doing some of it with day job so all right client.post c2 addy.2 owns um plus slash add i think it's advic is what i'm using and we're throwing in and js don't have a client object yet. Our client is here. So let's throw that down here. Yeah, it's very coincidental that my previous job was as a Unity game dev. Okay, so you're familiar with it. 
I, d I appreciate people who are familiar with C Sharp. Um, you know, they they were forced to have the hand they've got, so I, I can't hate. Um, but I, I personally, it gives me flashbacks to having to deal with Java and high in college and high school, honestly, but mainly college. I went to a college that was um, behind <laughs> behind the curve a little bit, um, and they taught everything in java they didn't teach any other language in their main you know they they had an assembly class that wasn't required um but everything else was in java and it was just miserable i i, I hate that language more than anything um all right so let's see how we we're doing this up here so dot send dot await dot text dot await okay functional programming stuff right here What's the problem here? Oh. Dot to underscore string. All right, that shouldn't be a problem anymore. And throw this down there. That sends. Oh, wait. Uh, text on a wait. That will give us our results. Our results should have the body in it. It's not liking this. I think because it's got to be, yep, async. It isn't an async function. That returns a result or an option. Okay. So result is going to return either a string or a box with a dynamic error. And I'm missing some syntax somewhere. It's box dynamic standard error error. Okay. But I think I imported standard error error up here. I did because I'm smart. Did I just get a notification or was that the song? Yeah, that was the song. That song has, it, it's got a um, little sound effect and it's every time the song plays, it has a little sound effect that sounds like my follower notification from like way back. Let's see if it'll play again, probably won't. Y'all probably think I'm nuts now. Okay, so now we've got a wrap ret. So, okay, ret. Now that should be golden. So let's try init commit. Instead of netlibs and username, we're going to run netlib init commit with the username. Except this has got to be an at string. Let's see if we can just get rid of that. Yep, show can. All right. Let's see how this goes. First run. D what? We got a first run with no errors? Question mark? That can't be right. Not software that I wrote. Surely not. Okay. So it's unprocessable, which is okay. That's an error that we didn't necessarily not expect. So if we go down to... We may have hit the wrong endpoint, honestly. It's add vic. We want, no, that was right. Post add vic, vic victim. Let's see. It may not be hitting the data model right. Print vic dot to underscore dict. Um, let's go back up to victim. It's not gonna let me control click it because why would it? We want a time and an ID. Let's see what we're sending. We are sending a time and an ID. But still having issues. Can you suggest some resource to learn malware dev in C++ or Python? I'm currently learning from Sector 7. Sector 7 is solid. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing a review of their first class. Um, but, uh, what's it called? Um, Python for malware. It's called like evil Python. It's not that. Python malware, top type. It's a book. It's like evil Python. Black Hat Python. Um, I have not read this. Um, 
And disclaimer, this is a an affiliate link. Um, but Black Hat Python is supposed to be pretty damn good. Um, if you're watching on Twitch, all one of you, I'll throw this in chat as well. Um, affiliate link, but I heard that this is a fairly good book. Um, have not read it yet myself because I'm not doing... I mean, I, I could probably use it for bug bounty stuff, honestly. Um, but yeah, I heard that's a fairly good book. Um, Xerox 00, zero sec malware section. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out. Appreciate it, OX. I'll, I'll check that out. Um, all right. So back here. Can we print our JS? Print line. JS getting sent. We're going to throw a debug in there and print JS. See if it'll even let us do that. That will also show us whether or not. Okay, that should be fine. Just getting sent time ID. Okay. So what I'm betting this is, is we're getting parsing errors here. The book is awesome, but it's in Python 2. Oh, that sucks. They don't have a Python 3 version? Black Hat Python. So that's second edition. Do they have a third edition out yet? That's the first edition, so it's definitely not that. Oh, that sucks, yeah. That's definitely that's definitely the newest version. Man, I really hope that they release that soon, because I've been recommending that to a lot of people. Huh. So, it's looking like we are going to have to go ahead and deal with this parsing bug tonight instead of Wednesday. Um, which is fine. It's going to be in our reg ops, and I think I know what the problem is. So, let's look here. Here, we are creating a buffer of size 200, right? We are reading into that buffer, and we are eventually getting, yeah, this buff size right here. This buff size is getting written to, okay? So since the buff size is getting written to, I think basically what we can do is grab the actual buffer size from buff size here and resize it. Does that make sense at all? Hopefully. So what we might be able to do is do it right here from zero to buff size as it probably has to be as u size. Type string cannot be indexed. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, so we're gonna have to do this up here. String from So it's returning a type string. Oh, that was a notification. I think. George Private, thanks for the subscription. Much appreciated. Knew I heard that notification sound. You're always sketching me out with these retracted messages. <laughs> I know it's probably nothing bad, but it's like two or three times I've seen retracted messages. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I just got something. Oh, that was an email. All right, so we've got and rat. So let, let's see, how are we gonna do this? Let trimmed equal to Actually, we might, I might have been wrong. From zero to buff size. I may have just put it in the wrong place. So instead of in that parentheses, let's put it here. This issue with that type string cannot be indexed by standard ops. Is 
it because this needs to be a use house? Nope. All right. So select trimmed equal to, let's see, ret from zero to buff size. Basically all we have to do is trim this down. Type UA cannot be, so ret standard string from UTF-8. Rent from zero buff size has an issue with that. Cannot index into a value of type. Okay, so it's got to be dot on wrap. And then it's got an issue with the range. Type string cannot be indexed by standard ops, blah, blah, blah. So it may need to be a string from. Then chunk that in there. Now it's definitely got beef with that. Huh. So what's, what, what is the type of red? It's a vector of U8s. So it should have no issue. So let red equal to red be from zero to buff size. Cannot be known at compile time. Trait size does not imply, oh, okay. So because it's a vector, doesn't know the size of it at compile time. Type U8 cannot be indexed. So we need a slice. So Rust slice of VEC. How do I get a slice of VEC T in Rust? That's exactly what we need. By indexing it with the range. It says that I can do it this way. And A from one to four. So it says that I can do this. Might be because, yep, that's all it was. <laughs> Damn it. All right, so that should fix our issue. Let's see if we can rerun it. Hopefully that will trim it up and it did, baby. Buff size, let's do minus one because we've got that trailing null byte there. Buff size as U size, minus one as U size. That's annoying. So we fixed that bug like two days early, y'all. Who expected that? Can we get pogs in chat? That's the most annoying thing that I have ever heard a streamer say. Like every minor thing. Can we get pogs in chat, y'all? All right, so let's see if it's sending to our C2 correctly. Now that we've fixed that bug. Nope, it's still not sending it correctly. Oh, wait. We haven't rest it's because we haven't restarted our C2. Like I told... Who else remembers me telling you I was going to forget to restart my C2? Now I bet money it's gonna work. I didn't, but I, I did bet money on it. Previous line, what the hell? Get Vex, JS. Why does I have an issue with that? Maximum recur, we have recursion? <laughs> How did we get recursion? P 
poggers. All right, so running two dict there. Big dict is equal to that. Curvex style push. So where are we getting our recursion? JS is equal to get vex. Where am I? What? Dad? I'm on line 56. It absolutely is. <laughs> We're a hundred percent getting. Okay, I see. I see what I did here. We named, we named an endpoint the same as our helper function. Um, dict. Js is equal to get vix. Dict. There we go. That should have fixed it. right hit our box let's see if it works we're still getting recursion errors did i forget to save something still saying the same line js is equal to get vix dict okay now we should have fixed everything hit that hit this that and this <sighs> key error victims okay that's all right line 42 weirdly enough actually there's an awesome metamorphic malware written in rust it's open source i think you can implement some of its code to your malware Ooh, share that share the hell out of that OX gets a special shout out for that. Oh, cool. I've got two, two advic endpoints. Man, I'm making a mess of the C2. The funniest part is, is this stream was supposed to be all about the C2 and I've been fixing more bugs in my malware and creating more bugs in my C2. Really great stuff there. That's just completely backwards because I've been a backend programmer for ages and a Rust programmer for like 30 seconds. Great stuff there. Hit our box. Time is not defined. Ugh. Time is not defined. Line 18 and two dicks. Self.time. See, stupid errors like that. Just infuriating. Run it again. All of this should be working. Get fix key error victims again. I bet what we did was we overwrote victims at some point. No, didn't do that. This is in line, let's see, 66. Get fix. Pull up to get fix. Let's see what we're, so we're supposed to be calling get fix dict. Ah, this is annoying. Again, just dumb errors because I'm not doing naming well. I'm gonna refactor all of this shit so that I stop making dumb errors on like naming convention. List object has no attribute push. It's because push is the JavaScript version and I actually meant append. Again, stupid errors. So by the way, I know that there is a watch function on Uvicorn. Um, for some reason, I get errors every time I use it, so I just don't bother with it anymore. Stream should be titled Coding Malware and Introducing Bugs in Your C2. Honest to God, I might change 
I might change the title <laughs> to that, like in your honor, Doc, Darko, because that's that's more accurate than anything. <sighs> this is again just dumb errors. Line seventy-two. Yeah, so it's supposed to be JSON dot dumps. This is stuff that like I've been doing a billion times in my career, but because I'm bouncing back and forth between programming languages, I'm getting it like all mind fogged. All right, eventually we are going to get a code 200 on this. Line one, column one. Immediately had an error. ID is that, time is that, should be dealing with no issues there. Dealing with a problem. Getting a problem in our get fix dict, actually. JSON.loads f.read. We overwrite, yeah, we overwrote it. <laughs> That's what happened. I was like, I, I know I've dealt with this error before. Yeah, that's, so whenever you screw up in your Python code that writes to a JSON file and it overrides it with nothing, then you get the incredibly useful error. Hold on, wait for it. Expecting value line one, column one, car zero. Just so useful, just incredible error messages there, Python. Um, so that's why I knew immediately that I overwrote my JSON file because I've I've dealt with that headache so many times. Right, get a run, and we've got a 200 OK. Let's see if it wrote correctly. Victims.json, and we are golden, ladies and gents. We have officially added victims. That's pretty neat, huh? All right, so let me look at my goals for this stream. Goals for this stream, handy dandy notebook. C2 storing data, did that. Create victim endpoint, did that. Well, ladies and gents, we're done for the night. We've been going an hour and 15 minutes and actually got shit done this stream. So, next stream, Wednesday. We're gonna implement process enumeration and we've already fixed the string termination so we can cross that baby off. Um, finished that. And we've got to work on process enumeration on Wednesday, cross off Monday stream. Y'all, this has been, I've actually gotten okay at Rust. I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to get cocky here, but I've gotten super all right at Rust. Or at least I've gotten all right at debugging Rust. <laughs> that, that I've had a lot of practice with. Okay, so appreciate all of y'all showing up to the stream. It's been lively in YouTube chat, at least. Twitch, you've been dead, but, you know, what's new? Um, so appreciate all of y'all. I will see you again on Wednesday at 8, 8.30, 6.30.